It doesn't take 2020 vision to see the world is in a dark place right now. People are worried about their health, their jobs, their access to necessities and are pining to pickle their internal organs in public again. It's at times like these that escapism is most important. Because if looking out of this window scares you, then at least this window can show you a better world. I can imagine you're sat at home, padding for time by making good use of those tissues you've stocked up on. But I can say for certain that some of your best memories have been spent in isolation. No matter how bored you may feel or how scared you might be at the moment, there are infinite ways for you to make good use of your time indoors. And if there's one thing I've learned whilst in isolation, it's that when hell comes to earth, we're more than capable of walking through it. It's no secret that Doom has been a monumental success, but somehow I was blissfully unaware of its existence throughout my childhood. My exposure to video games was simply what I was given or whatever was in the bargain bins at GameStation. So when I picked out a copy of Doom 3 BFG edition in the Christmas sale that year, it was based on a friend's recommendation, not 20 years of hype and universal critical acclaim. I didn't even know Doom 1 and 2 were on the disc until I popped it in so I felt obliged to play the series in order, but I was hesitant after seeing the visuals which looked like a modern game aired over teletext. However, I persevered and got lost for hours in one of the most well-refined games ever put to a disc, floppy or otherwise. I loved playing through Doom 3 as well, slow as it may be, but I kept coming back to the first two entries time and time again. I bought them on PS3, I bought them on my phone, I bought them on PS4, I bought them on Switch, and I bought them on my PC. Twice. This game may seem outdated when analysed from a modern perspective, but it had exactly the kind of gameplay, visual themes and music that my minuscule brain was after. The gameplay loop of Doom is fairly simple. Shoot the enemies, find some secrets if you feel like it, and get to the exit. However, each enemy type behaves differently and demands a different method of attack from the player. Couple that to a selection of weapons that all have their uses. Shotgun for short range, chain gun for long range, a chainsaw for assaulting your ears, the rocket launcher for crowd control at a distance, the plasma rifle for crowd control in confined areas, the BFG for being amazing, and the pistol for being shit. Shit as it may be, it serves to make getting the chain gun more satisfying, so it's a temporary negative really. Otherwise, every gun is a triumph in its use case, feel and sound design, making for potentially the most well-balanced weapon set ever seen in an FPS, and one that many games in years to come will try to imitate. But the time frame prior to the game's release was what made the game a hit in the first place. Prior to Doom's release in 1993, the most advanced game you could play on your computer was a slideshow, and mature themes lathered in blood and guts was not a common sight. First person shooters weren't even established as their own genre back then, which made Doom's mastery in level design, weapon selection and visuals all the more impressive. Sadly, only the more well-to-do people at the time were able to experience Doom in all its glory, but it made it all the more elusive and desirable. It was such a phenomenon that console makers industry-wide clamoured to have their own versions of Doom, no matter what the cost. Today though, Doom's presence is very much still felt in modern games. It's harder to find shooters that don't take influence from Doom than otherwise. The problem is, many fail to channel every element of Doom's gameplay, and one without the other is like vinegar without salt. Hard Reset, Shadow Warrior, Painkiller and many more have tried and failed to match or exceed the groundwork laid by Doom. Meanwhile, works done by independent developers like Dusk and Amid Evil did an admirable job of taking care of the crown crafted by id Software. Speaking of id, after veering off course with Doom 3, they have once again distilled the essence of Doom and have masterfully seasoned it with modern touches. Doom's reboot, and the recently released Doom Eternal, reassure me that the future is bright for this legendary franchise. But that legendary status, for once, has not been tarnished with age. 
Time after time, I'll go through my back catalogue, hoping to find gems I've missed over the years. And though I've hit the jackpot here and there, very few games have managed to live up to the expectations set by everyone before me. Half-Life, Skyrim and Red Dead 2 are just a few examples of my expectations overwriting the result. Even a great game won't suffice with a Metacritic page that looks like this. But Doom is different. I had no prior expectations or knowledge of its achievements, and I emerged from its campaign more passionate and invested in the video game industry than ever before. Without Doom, I doubt I would be studying video games right now. Without Doom, I'd probably never have met half of the friends I have now. And without Doom, I'm sure the time I'm spending at home now will be a lot harder to deal with. Thank <laughs> you.